guys, Matt Schaefer back here. I have a massive build. You probably haven't seen me post anything in a while. This is the reason why. I mean, this is pretty much, I'd say the Mona Lisa of what we've done so far, leaving no detail behind. Maximum sound quality. This one's a 2019 Escalade Platinum. So let's get right to it. So as far as what you see in the trunk, um, obviously a ton of detail here. We removed the third row seat in order to put this enclosure in. We're using nine Moscone Pro amplifiers. We're using three Raven 10s. Uh, we got our DSP back here. So again, there's just a lot going on. Typically, I'll make sure the trunk has usable space. In this case, we wanted this to be more of a demo or a showpiece. So the client did not need this room here. He's just gonna use the room behind the back seats there. So we wanted to utilize everything here and really just go maximum detail. Uh, so there's really a ton, ton to go over here. So kind of breaking down how we built this panel. Uh, this shape here emulates the floor mat that was back here. And I put this, uh, I brought it with me just so I can kind of show you that shape is exactly what you see right here. So it really brings that OEM design that was already in this location and it builds it into this exact panel here. All this different types of acrylic, all this was made in 2D here. And then it was basically heat bent to have that uh, exact angle to it. So each one of these individual pieces of trim were all heat bent. This piece of acrylic heat bent. Um, obviously this piece of PVC heat bent. We have uh, a single piece of eighth inch aluminum right here, followed by an Alcantara panel above it. So I really brought these button head hex bolts into the equation because this particular client builds custom Ducatis for a living. So when you think of a exotic motorcycle, you think about anodized parts, you think about a lot of things looking modular, you see a lot of exposed Allen heads. So that's why we decided to incorporate this because anytime I build something, I always want to one, respect the OEM, respect the uh, original design, and also add in the flavor of the client to make it feel custom to that particular client. So that's why we went with all these floating panels with lights underneath with these button head Allen bolts. This whole panel here is completely magnetized at the bottom. So for servicing, we can just break that magnetized um, lock right there. And now we can get to all the settings of the amplifiers. So if we need to tweak anything, if we need to do anything like that, very easily done right here, very accessible. Uh, you don't have to deconstruct the entire car in order to get to some of these settings. Behind this OEM panel, we have our Moscone Aerospace 8 to 12 DSP. This is our interface that is allowing our audio signal to pass through to our amplifiers. So the factory radio will feed through here, our AMAS Bluetooth streaming device will feed through here, and then our Astell and Kern high-res player analog will feed through this device here. Again, easily accessible. You could swap it out if anything were to happen. Again, get to the RCAs, get to all the adjustments right there behind the factory panel. and can basically put all this stuff back together with one hand. That's how easily it just clicks back into place. And you can almost hear it snap as, it, uh, as the magnets hit. As far as the amplifiers go, I told you we have nine amplifiers. You're gonna see five here. You're gonna have one, two, three, four, five. We're gonna have our four channel, which is going to go to our mid and our tweeter up front. We have another four channel which is going to feed our rear Utopia, uh, our six and our tweeter. And then we have uh, three Moscone Pro 1, 110s here. And all of these are going to be in class A mode, feeding our double mid bass eight inch speakers up front in the front doors. I'll show you that a little later. So again, two for the left, one for the right, I'll show you where the other amps are in a little bit. We have three Raven 10 inch subwoofers. Uh, these are made by Orca Design in California. Same company that distributes Moscone, Focal, Illusion within the United States. This is kind of their home subwoofer. So I can kind of uh, relay it and say it's kind of like the C10 XL from Illusion, 
uh, but it is a much, much better performing subwoofer. A lot more power handling. Again, just an excellent subwoofer, very tonal throughout the whole band of frequencies. So some of the different materials you see in here is we have the factory match vinyl. This is a 100% factory match vinyl that came from Detroit Book. We have matte black acrylic, which you can see up front. We have the gloss black acrylic that you can see up front. We have this, uh, this is, well, this is a piece of acrylic, which is wrapped in 3M wrap. Uh, the reason we did that is up there on the front, if you can kind of see the radio up there, it has the same color material. Now it's not like a, a anodized aluminum or anything like that. It's not a brushed aluminum. It's more of like a painted chrome-like color. So we had to emulate that. So this is actually a piece of acrylic that is wrapped in this 3M material, which matches what you see up front. It was the closest way to get an exact match of that same type of material that you see up front. We have our gloss black, we have our matte black. Then of course we have a lot of branding back here. So you have my logo, which is kind of like front and center here, which is on its own colored piece of acrylic. This is a white piece of acrylic. All these illuminate with the door. So you open a door, all these lights kick on or you can flip a switch for demo purposes, which is I, how I have it right now, so the lights do not time out. Then you have all of these other different bands of acrylic. You have acrylic, acrylic, uh, lights under here, lights under here, lights under here, lights under here, and then lights back there. And we have three different channels coming out of RGB controller. So all of these three different channels are completely programmable. So you can really mix match everything that you want color wise so if you're going to a certain event and it, you know to coordinate with a certain color you can do that you can see there's more acrylic up in here and then again the raven logo illuminates here uh this is probably a good time to kind of show you what it looks like at night so let's check this out right now so you have the platinum uh sill so this is basically the trunk sill that we made from scratch to look a lot like what you see here on the other door sills. Then we have a light under this modular panel. There's a piece of aluminum under this uh, Alcantara suede piece. So we have a light under there. We also have a couple bands of acrylic, three separate pieces in total. We have a piece here, actually four separate pieces. We have one here, one here. Those are both illuminated purple at the moment. We have this blue piece that goes all the way across. And then we have the mosaic one in the center that's lit up white. So everything that you see here that's color is all off a RGB controller. And uh, we can individually change these pieces of acrylic to really whatever we want. And then you have the sub enclosure here. So how we did this is actually there's a band of lights on this top layer. So this is a piece of acrylic here that's wrapped in this silver material material to match the dashboard. So the lighting is actually like right here. And then this is another layer of acrylic. So the lights are on this top layer shining through. So everything you see here is acrylic and it's basically shining through the individual pieces to make it out to the end, as you can see there. Obviously there's a panel back here as well behind these panels that also lights up around the subwoofers all the way around so you can kind of see how that looks and it's hard, very hard to see in the daytime but this raven logo also lights up with this band of acrylic much like we have down here we also have uh lighting up here underneath this piece and then of course we have lighting behind these pieces here so these are two end caps you can see it easier you know, in the daytime, so you can kind of understand uh, how those pieces cap off the end of the enclosure. And then of course, the amp rack, um, again, rear seat controls here, which have been removed. We click that there, the up button automatically goes up all the way till the end of the motor stroke. And then when it hits the very top, you will see the blue activate. Right now, you have the white soft glow and then bam, there's the blue. So basically when it hits the very top of the motor stroke, um, it activates and lets the RGB flow through that upper panel. I really wanted to do that to be like a, you know, like a two-step action. It goes up 
and then the light illuminates to kind of give like that cool flare as it hits the top. I did that by using like a, a like a actuator limit switch. When it hits the very top, it basically just allows that, you know, the 12 volt for that RGB light to go through. So I think that's really neat. Of course, you have the piece of acrylic up here. You also have a band around the top of the amps to make them all look like they're connected, to make it look like it's one big amp. You can see this piece of acrylic here too, behind this panel, connects all the amplifiers together. And we do have, again, that light that runs on all of them. That light also, um, like I said, illuminates where this blue piece is just from the uh, soft glow around it. And then of course we hit the down button. You see that RGB light immediately go off. It goes all the way down till it's flush with the enclosure. And you notice, you know, typically linear actuators are really freaking loud. Uh, I actually black hole tiled everything behind this enclosure, the entire void, to really kill the reflections of that actuator squeal, you know, because nobody wants to hear the actuator squeal when they do something cool like that. So uh, that helped a lot. So if you guys are going to use any type of actuators in your builds, talking to you installers, try and use some black hole tile to kill some of those reflections. So this is a look at the RGB controller here. So we have the different outputs. This basically uh, links them together. So right now, if we wanna choose one, let's choose this one for instance. As you can see, I'm controlling that layer there. So just pick another one for instance, and then there's that layer. And then that's gonna be changing that layer. So again, it's cool because it really gives you the versatility to really do whatever you want. So, you know, if you're going to a certain event, I mean, you can really match it. You know, if you're tailgating, you can match it to your team colors, you know, whatever it may be. All right, getting back to the initial design here. I incorporated a lot of this acrylic uh, that I made into a mesh. And this design is basically made to emulate what you see on the amplifiers. So you see it here and you see it up here, which this kind of reminds me of like a cool wind diffuser. But both of these are made so it can pull the design of the amplifiers into the equation. And it's, it's really neat because uh, this type of grill material we can actually see in the vents in the back seat, which I'll show you in a little bit. So again, this grill is exactly the scale of the amplifiers, which makes everything match in perfectly. We have the matching Alcantara suede here. We have the same color Alcantara suede, which is perforated right here. And also all our modular caps are this perforated Alcantara suede. Looking above this um, panel here, you can kind of see it. Uh, the Cadillac logo is actually lightly rastered into this suede using our laser. Uh, so it's basically burnt in to give you that ghost look. So it's one of those things you'll, you'll be standing back here and when the light catches it right, you know, you're gonna see that added detail, which typically, you know, you'd miss maybe the first couple times looking at it. Now on top, we have more of these panels here. Uh, this cove chamfer on this plastic piece actually matches the front door panel perfectly. And I'll show you that in a bit. We have the same type of design up here on this panel. And then again, we have our grill wind diffuser. Uh, just look here, that kind of ties in the opposite of this shape, which when it's all lit up, kind of emulates that shape. So. When it's all lit up, it really ties that in together with this. And then we have two more Alcantara panels in the back, one that's sitting flush with the enclosure, one that's the end cap. So I told you originally we had nine amplifiers. You saw five here. The really cool thing that we did on this install that we wanted to make different is we have four more resting inside the enclosure. 
So basically these switches here controlled the rear seats. Those are no longer there. So we utilize this up and down switch for a motorized amp rack. So again, right now, again, everything is in its stowed state. We can hit this button one time and then all of a sudden you see the other four amplifiers motorizing out of the top of the enclosure. Really cool kind of wow factor once everyone kind of uh, takes the back end into you know consideration. They swallow it, they digest everything that they're seeing and then that's like the wow factor. So again, we got four more Moscone Pro amplifiers up here. And if you're wondering, I didn't get to the three subs. So we have three 110s basically in class D mode that it's basically a thousand watt amplifier going to each one of these tens. And then we have our remaining 110 in class A mode going to our last front mid base. Uh, I'm not sure if you noticed as well, but you see that, that blue ridge there that actually activated when that amplifier rack hit the top part of its stroke, of its motor stroke. So it's like a second action. It motorizes up and that RGB does not click on until it hits the very top. But yeah, so another cool thing is we can still get to each one of the removable magnetic covers for the amplifier. So we can still tune adjust all of these amplifiers uh, obviously you can see the fans are still open, so uh, it can have plenty of air circulation. Same thing with the design here. There's a, there's a large gap between the bottom piece of acrylic and this opening here, so air can escape out of this opening right here. So yeah, very cool, very different. Uh, this is one of those jobs where the client just said, you know, make something special, use the best equipment, and fortunately, this thing sounds as good as it looks. It sounds absolutely excellent. One of the best sounding cars we've ever done, hands down. I'll show you more of that here in a second. So again, we have the switches here. Hit the down button. The amplifier rack goes down. You notice that the RGB light cut off immediately, and it just goes back to its default white uh, illumination. So showing you the behind the seat look, I can flip this seat down. I mentioned the grills that you see. Again, this was all hand-built just like all the back was hand-built from raw materials. We played off of the grills on the back of the front seats. So you have this Alcantara panel that rises up to where these vents are, which is what we did here. So this panel essentially rises up, billows out in the middle, has our two vents here that split the seats, comes down in a nice area there. We can flip this up. We have our, basically, a, we have a magnetic vinyl panel down here just to break up the suede, the transition with the floor. Uh, the suede goes all the way down in the center. And then we have two removable panels. You can see that one says relays, this one says fuses. The beautiful thing is we can pop these out and there's all our system fusing in there. All neatly tucked away. Uh, again, if anything were to happen, we can easily service everything there in the back. That, you can see the magnets revolving around the inside of this panel. And again, we rastered the word fuses with that uh, accent line around this panel. And I don't know if you notice the fuses, the font is actually the same font as the Escalade logo. There is the back of the removable panels, magnets embedded in. So again, this thing just really sucks into place. Looking at the top of this panel here, again, we have another accent panel, which this one here is the matching vinyl. We have again, the matching Alcantara uh, topper insert. And then again, these grills here, which again are meant to emulate what we see here. So having this inspired the circle design, which then it inspired the design to really pull into the amplifier. So that's kind of the thought process behind, you know, what we're trying to pull inspiration from, how we're trying to make things look like they're supposed to be there. So again, all this stuff is in here, all handmade. And at the end of the day, it does look like it's supposed to be here. 
um, given that this is even more of an extreme case, a more showy case. Again, this is more for show. It's more for demo purposes uh, to show off the brands and really um, just as a showpiece. So again, we, I, I feel we did that in a way that still respects the OEM design, still pulls all the details, the design elements of uh, the car and also makes it feel unique to the client himself. Looking at the back speakers here, we have Focal Utopia M Brilliums. This is the tweeter that we uh, molded into this location here. This was a grill before the grill was too small. The tweeter was too big to fit into the location. So we had to mold it into the front and then we rewrapped the panel in Alcantara suede to make it look like it's supposed to be there. The six and a half inch mid range is down here. And I can show you behind the panel right now how everything was completely stout and treated. Black hole tile was laid down. These custom speaker adapters were made to fit in this location. They bolt right in with no modification at all. Uh, so again, we never compromise the integrity of the vehicle. Everything is perfectly bolted in, uh, CAD designed and laser cut in order to have a factory fit. This is the uh, door sill, just to kind of show you where the inspiration came for the back end. Uh, so again, our panel lights up exactly like these door sills do. All right, now moving along to the front doors. Uh, basically this whole door panel, the lower part at least, was completely refabricated. So main reason we went with two eight inch mid base for the front is this particular client wanted to have a lot of headroom on the subwoofers. Wanted the subwoofers to be able to get loud, wanted them to feel dynamic, uh, obviously wanted to feel the impact from what he had in the past. That's what he wanted to do with this. So in order to do that, we had to do two eight inch mid base. In order to do that, we had to make an enclosure here behind the lower part of the door panel that houses two of the eight inch mid base. Now, with the two eight inch mid base, we had to refabricate the lower door panel. So we took a lot of the factory cues into mind. This is what you see from the factory. So we took the same type of design here and you have this little cove up here at the top on the panel. And we mimic that with what you see there. So again, this went to this side over here. So it basically comes over and then comes down. Um, obviously we just extended that because ours goes a lot further over because we have two of the mid base. You also see this uh, hexagon pattern. So we were able to do the same thing and it's going to be very hard to see, but I'll overlay some build pictures of the door panel so you can understand how it's layered. But if the light hits it just right, you can see like a hexagon pattern. You can kind of see it there. You can see a hexagon pattern behind this fidelity mesh. Uh, brought the Alcantara into the equation here, the gloss black acrylic, and then of course we did our Utopia M badging here. Uh, obviously there was bows up here before, so we're showcasing what is in the door. Um, we also have a light that runs right here to illuminate this. As far as nice little accent lighting, it is uh, basically mirrored off of this circuit here. So you have this nice little white light at night, and then you have this very soft glow down here that illuminates the door panel. And again, this was the um, factory part of the door panel that we completely remolded uh, the pocket before ran all the way, probably to about here and then up. So we refabricated everything. It's all bolted to the door. We have our new Alcantara insert, so this pocket is still active here, and it still bolts directly onto the door panel and everything snaps on like it's a factory door panel. We have our mid-range up here. This is where the factory tweeter sat before. This is the factory mid-range location. It's kind of a crappy location, especially on the driver's side. As you can see, it's uh, pretty much behind the steering wheel. It's, it's just in the way it's obstructed and it's not high enough. So we built these pods here to basically mesh in there with those A pillars that we built up there. So kind of hard to see there, but you can kind of see that swoop stops at the top of that mid range there. As far as the mid range, same fidelity mesh. We have the gloss black acrylic insert that has the matte black inside bevel. So again, it brings in the gloss black that you see there in the center of the dashboard and the matte black inserts, which you see 
you know, across the door panel here. Tweeters are basically on access to the driver. The mids we couldn't really do at the same angle because it would have been a much more dramatic angle. Uh, and obviously you have to account for the magnet of these mid range and we didn't want to block this. So that was probably the biggest concern I had where um, it might not have imaged as good as I wanted it to. We did kick them up so they are, you know, on a even plane with the dashboard. But my God, did we get these things to image well. So perfectly perfect, like I like to call it. There's no doubt of where the Singer is, which would be dead center of the dashboard. Now, we do not utilize the factory speakers, so there are no, the mids aren't up there. The center channel is not utilized up there. Basically have these four speakers, the mid, the tweeter, and the two woofers down here in the door on each side. And that is giving us our center image. So just a few things of note as far as how important the tuning is, the EQing, all of that has to be perfect from left to right. So if 800 Hertz, for instance, is higher in the right channel than the left channel, then our vocal can waver, right? So depending on what we're listening to, it might go from left to right. Um, in this case, and a lot of people, you know, kind of say as, as far as their feedback goes, is everything has its own place, right? Anything that you ever hear in a song is gonna have its own location. It's gonna be in a different location. Nothing is gonna overlap. So it's one of those things that, you know, just talking through video like this, it's, you can't, you can't really explain it. You just have to understand it. You got to experience it to know what I'm saying. But it's, it's much like uh, going to a concert, you know, going to a concert, you could probably close your eyes and kind of envision where things are located. You can tell things are coming from a different location. And I'm talking about more of an intimate concert, not like a massive venue where things do get lost in the reflections of the venue. We're talking about more and more of an intimate experience, like if it was happening right in front of you. So this is gonna depict that. This is really gonna isolate the vocals. It's gonna isolate the instrumentation. It's all gonna be in the spot that it's supposed to be in. You know, in a song like Prince When Doves Cry, right? The beginning when he's singing in the left channel, his voice will fade and it basically fades from left to right. So you can just watch it go across the dashboard. Michael Jackson Thriller, you know, when he's walking in the beginning of Thriller, it's right to left and the seventh step is gonna be always dead center. So it's things like that that make it exciting to hear a soundstage car like this really opens your eyes to how your favorite music was created in the first place. Makes the listening experience much, much different. So these are just some of the things that we take in mind anytime that we are designing a system like this. This is what we need to achieve. This is a standard. This is the reference. So getting into how the system works, we put our DSP controller up here. So this is an Alcantara panel uh, backed with acrylic that we made that basically bolts to the headliner. So we use the same Alcantara suede that you see in the headliner so it matches perfectly. And then we basically drew this in CAD to emulate the front of the controller because we want it to blend in. We don't want this big aluminum DSP controller up here uh, engraved Moscone on there. So this is how you control the master volume of everything that you're listening to. Now, in this case, we have three separate presets. And those presets are going to be as follows. Preset one is gonna be your OEM radio. So when we're using the OEM radio in this case, we're gonna put that on preset one, and we're gonna turn the volume all the way up, and then from there, you're gonna utilize the factory steering wheel controls or the factory volume, and that's gonna be your master volume. Also with the OEM preset, we're using a NAV-TV GM650 interface. It's a Zen piece, and basically what that is doing this is the picture of it here in its installed state. But what it's doing is it's decoding the factory signal. So it's using the most signal as an input and it's getting that and it's basically taking the algorithm out of the equation. So all the equalization, all the time alignment, all of that crap is completely filtered out and almost reset. So it's almost turning our factory radio into an aftermarket radio. We have a good signal unclipped from the low to the full output. So that is the best way to interface if you're able to do that on your particular car. Within preset two is gonna be your AMAS. That is gonna be if you easily want to connect your phone to the audio system, right? 
you or a buddy wants to play something from your phone, we can do that super simple. We don't have to go through the factory radio because we're gonna have compression within the factory radio and it's not a direct signal going to the DSP. Um, preset three is going to be our high res player. So in this case, we're using an Astell and Kern SP2000. This is their flagship model. Um, absolutely excellent dual DAC player. Uh, some of the best DACs in the world in this thing. Some of the things that you're gonna realize when you have a player like this, you're gonna hear multiple nuances, things that you're not used to listening to, and that's for multiple reasons, right? Uh, this can play a better source signal, so this can play, you know, DSD, it can play all your FLAC files, so 24192, 2496, 2448, 1644, all of those. So really it can play any music in its native format, and that's the most important thing. So most music is recorded a, at a much higher level and then it's down sampled or compressed to filter out to things like Pandora and things of that nature. Well, most modern music is being recorded at a, at a better native format. And the reason for that is so it sounds better when it is compressed. So when it's compressed, if it's recorded in a higher format, much like you would see, you know, TV as an analogy, um, it's going to look better or it's going to sound better in this case compressed so we can take advantage of that with one of these players the music format much like if you're watching something in 4k versus uh, 720p is going to look a lot better in this case it's going to sound a lot better on top of that of course the DAX are going to play a huge role right so the DAX of the player are going to break down the digital signal that's really going to help with our separation our width our staging how much things are separated. So that is why this is so important. You get so many different benefits with utilizing this. And you can just look at this as like, this is the ultimate radio, right? This is uh, this is gonna be your player that you can bring from car to car, or you can you know bring it on an airplane and have some nice headphones. There's a lot of different ways you can utilize the player and have it you know be very versatile. That's why I like selling these things and that's why I don't like having anything built in. When we're utilizing the player, we're basically using line out. So we're using the line out of the player and it's going to the analog input of our digital sound processor. So we leave open two channels in order to feed that analog signal into our processor. Now, the reason we use analog is for a few reasons. If we use the digital output one, we're already using that through the AMAS because uh, that's using Toslink output, but also you would then have to become very selective on the content that you're playing. Anything above 2496, you would not be able to feed through the optic, so the Toslink input of the DSP in this case. And then 2492 would be the limitation of the coax output, the digital coax output of the player. So if you did have any DSD tracks, you're not playing it. It's not being processed by the, by the uh, DSP. Also, you're not utilizing the DAC of the player. If you're not using the analog, you're not using the DACs of the player, and that's hello, kind of why you buy the player. That's why we use the analog output. You can play everything going through the player, DSD, you know, anything the player that can essentially process and decode, again, analog output into our processor. Now, we also did a really cool radar job so a radar and laser defense job on this car. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna link it in the description after the video, you'll see it, you can click on it. Definitely check that out. I wanted to keep separate videos because I didn't want this video to be too long. So definitely go ahead and check that out. But yeah, other than that, this entire car, uh, basically everything was stripped down. Everything was fully sound treated with hush mat, then Focal BAM material, so a thick foam material in the doors. This thing's basically built like a tank now. So this thing's super quiet. You can get a ton of sub bass, not a lot of rattle or resonations within the vehicle. And that's exactly how you want it. Obviously pumping a ton of mid bass out of these front doors. We need these doors to be like physical enclosures. So again, fully sound treated. Black hole tile was put in there to kill the reflections of the, of the mid bass. But yeah, so in this case, we have all the same factory Features completely retained. We lost nothing. We added to the sound quality tenfold. Again, your expectation when you sit in this seat is vocal dead center of the windshield there. And then again, everything should stage accordingly. So if there's 
somebody, uh, a, guitar a guitarist playing to his right, you should hear that. You should have a good idea of how far away they're standing apart, how big of a room they're standing in, or how big of a room they're recording in. All of these things should become super prevalent. And again, the only way that I can tell you guys to experience this is to just, you gotta hear something. So we're about to build a Tesla Model 3 for our shop to be our demo car. So if that's something you're interested in, you can go to our Mosaic website in order to book a time to come down to listen to it. So definitely look for that. All right, so here is the underhood. Again, we over-engineered everything within this build. Uh, this is our three banks of circuit breaker. So the main power runs through the stacked aluminum panel here. Again, we have bank one, bank two, bank three. We have three OT gauge um, runs that are going all the way to the back, coming from our auxiliary battery. So coming from our auxiliary battery, AGM battery, goes to a battery isolator, which goes to the starting battery. So essentially you can play the car until the car were, were, were to essentially die, it would run out of power, but you'd still be able to start the car. That's what the auxiliary battery is for. Uh, also, here's some pictures of the alternator we put in. It's a 370 amp alternator from Mechman Alternators. This thing bolted right in, worked flawlessly, integrated in perfectly, and we also replaced the main battery with an AGM battery, more of a deep cycle battery. Uh, so again, you could kill these batteries, you can run them down, you know, a hundred times and they're still going to recharge up to their full potential. All of the wiring, which you would essentially call the big three was done. So we have multiple hot gauge going from the battery to the frame, from the alternator to the frame, from the alternator to the battery. And of course, from our power supply back to the back, same thing with our power in the back. We have multiple hot gauge runs coming from the frame going up to our distribution. Same thing with our hot gauge coming from our power supply right here. So again, we kept everything looking clean. Um, everything is engineered to fit the car. It looks like it's supposed to be here. This is aluminum that we then brushed. And then this black mark, we used a, a spray called Surmark in our laser, which then transferred the black design onto the aluminum so it's not raised or anything it's like feels like it's built in to the aluminum again guys thanks for hanging with me throughout this whole video here those of you that are still with us massive project again my biggest to date i probably left 20 minutes out of it just because of how big it is i didn't want to bore you guys with all the details but this is what we do this is how we do it if you guys are interested in doing a project you can hit me up here is my phone number followed by my email these are two great points of contact in order to get a hold of me to start talking about a project uh, we take each car on a client by client basis everyone has a different expectation everyone has a different budget so we treat that as the case anything i do is not a cookie cutter build we do not pre-build parts we do not mass produce parts so every video you see is made on a case-by-case -case basis made for each client budget and each client expectation so keep that in mind we can work for you we can work out something with you even if it's not to this scale or anywhere close to this scale so keep that in mind we can make anything sound better. That's what we do. We know how to do it. We know how to tune it. We know how to install it. And we know how to keep the integrity of your car intact. We're not gonna hack anything up, guys. We're completely transparent. We show you everything, the behind the scenes, the pictures, everything. So you can also follow us on our three Instagram handles. Here's the one for the shop, sound effects home car, at the real Matty S, that's my personal, and then mosaic underscore design. Also make sure to check out our website. This is by far the most useful tool that we have. This has all our build logs, all the pictures, all the videos associated with each build. You can search by make, manufacturer, you can search by build type, you can search by anything. Um, this is where the hub of our information is going to be located. You can see the different uh, package breakdowns, Hi-Fi 1, 2, 3, Conversion 1, Conversion 2. This is the Conversion 2, which, will, which would be our, you know, our Holy S package, the best in audio, the best in aesthetics that we would offer for this platform. Uh, so again, 
check that out. Also, make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube. We do a lot of projects like this. We have a great project upcoming and make sure that you hit the bell to be notified when that gets released. So make sure you subscribe, guys. A like and a comment is always appreciated within these videos. Uh, make sure you follow along and until next time. So, I bet